Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. I'm Amjad Muhammad and I'll be with you for another 20 minutes or so, inshallah, taking your questions on 01274 214 299. That's 01274 214 299. Uh, you can call in or you can email on Q&A at iqra.tv. And uh, one question that we took that I haven't answered yet is the tasbihat. We dealt with the question on the tahajjud salah. I hope that is satisfactory to my dear brother. And also the question on how to perform salah on a chair. Um, the question on tasbihat uh, our Peterborough brother asked was, you know, how easy it's been made. Yani it's just like air escaping. So it's not like any effort has to go in. So subhana rabbi al adim or subhana rabbi al a'la. You know, there can be... When you're learning Arabic for the first time, it can be a little bit daunting, um, but the repetition helps. Subhan, Subhan, uh, Rabbi al Adim, Rabbi al A'la. So, really, it's just the last word uh, which changes, Azim and A'la. There's no real change other than that. So, you know, it's interesting how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has structured it in that way. And then Azim when we're in Ruku, and A'la when we're in Sajda. Um, and these are, you know, tasbihat which you can mention even outside of salah, because these are glorifications. You're glorifying Allah, Subhana Rabbi Al A'la, Subhana Rabbi Al Adim. Uh, these are, you know, you can say this all the time. It, it's a way of worship. It's a dhikr, askar. You're worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So in that way, obviously Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has made it very easy on the tongue. Uh, and very e very weighty on the scales, okay? Very weighty on the scales. Kalimatane khafifatane al lisan wa thakilatane al mizan. You know, they're light upon the tongue, but heavy on the scales. Um, and uh, the hadith is the last hadith in Sahih al Bukhari, in which obviously uh, all students who study the Sihasitta or all students who've studied the Dora, the Alimiya course, uh, will study that hadith. So that's the question there. I'm going to ask my esteemed colleague uh, if we have any other emails that have come through because my phone did not appear in front of me uh, whilst we were on that short break. Um, I'm hoping that somehow it's making its way, but I was told that my mobile phone rang in the studio. So it looks like my mobile phone's got a life of its own. How it managed to do that, I don't know. And the other thing is it's locked. So if somebody else used it, how do they use it if it's locked? My face is here. Unless there's somebody else who looks like this in the madrasa and they use that person's face for his face ID. Um, unless somebody knew my password. Ah. If it's my son, then my son knows my uh, password. It could be him, the little uh, crafty sausage. Could be him, couldn't it? Anyway, rumours, opinions, views, we'll find out sooner or later. Hopefully when uh, my esteemed colleague from Iqra TV goes and collects. So... Uh, my producer by now should have uh, produced a question for me. That's why he's a producer, whilst I've been making small talk with you. Um, I don't see it appear on my screen as yet. So whilst he's uh, fumbling around for that email or, or that question, inshallah, I will uh, carry on. Uh, no, it's not on my screen, sir. Yeah, you put it on the wrong screen. I, uh, here it comes. Drum roll. Here we are. So, Bismillah. My mum's registered middle name is Naz. She has since been told that this is not a good name to keep in terms of its meaning. Can you please shed any light on this and whether she should look at? Oh, okay. Um, Naz doesn't ring a bell um, and I haven't got my device to check uh, its meaning. Uh, I think it's actually a shortened name like Menaz. Okay, and people just shorten it to Naz. So if anything, the argument is against the shortening of the name. Yeah. So therefore, um, I can't comment on uh, the meaning of it until my phone magically appears or not. So therefore, we'll have to just wait on that. Uh, but when it comes to the shortening of names, I think the problem that we have is that the meaning... Uh, can become uh, problematic. So what we should do is not shorten names, generally speaking, uh, because as we shorten names, 
it, then you know the meaning can change. Um, so that's something that that needs to be looked at. But I, I think, as I said, um, but hey, alhamdulillah, it has arrived. Okay, the device has arrived. Um, that's very good. Mashallah. All oh, right. Interesting. Lots of missed calls from people. Anyway, so let's look up at the meaning of the name Naz now, okay? Um, there we go. So there's Naz, okay? Naz. Not Naz, because we pronounce it as Naz. Naz is Persian, and I don't know Persian. And it means coy or cute. It's a popular feminine given name in Pakistan and Turkey. And Naz is also used as a synonym for pride. So if it's used as a synonym for pride, then that's why it should be avoided. So as you see, phones are useful. Hence the reason why somebody has mentioned to her that she should change her name. So as it's a middle name, it's not really going to have an impact anyway. So the advice is that that name should be changed. Okay. So let me see if I have any questions on our channel whilst now, alhamdulillah, I have this with me. Um, so there we go. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum. If a sin is committed intentionally, uh, does that mean you will not be forgiven and definitely be questioned? Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All sins when one makes uh, tawbah to Allah are forgiven. That's our understanding. So therefore, whether a sin has been committed intentionally or a sin has been committed unintentionally, in all cases, um, that uh, sin uh, will be forgiven. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When one is due to pay zakat, how quickly should it be distributed to the poor and needy? Where it is given to a charity, how long can they hold it? Can one distribute part of the zakat and hold the rest for emergency situations? Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Once a charity receives zakat, then it should, as soon as possible, uh, try to dispense it. Um, because the zakat is not paid until it is given by the charity. Hence the reason why they should give it as soon as possible. Can they hold on to zakat? Um, well, if there is something imminent that they know of, then there maybe is some permissibility. There's a you know prob uh, possibility. But if there's nothing imminent and you're just speculating that khudana khasta something might happen, you know, so let's just keep hold of it. Then that's not something we should do. That's frowned upon. So if it's something that we're expecting, there's been an earthquake, uh, there's been a tsunami, there's been a flood. So we think thinking, hold on, you know, we're going to need to get people on the ground there soon. So let's not give this zakat in the place we were going to give it. Let's see how this settles and then we can give the zakat there. Then yes, that's what they should do. But not if there's nothing happening and it's just speculative that, you know, what if there is a disaster? What if there is some natural disaster that takes place? Uh, then, you know, what should we do? You know, we, at least we've got some zakat money then. So not on speculation. But if there is a, a, a something uh, taking place literally at that moment, then there is a scope for holding on until that matter clarifies. Can ihram be made out of any material? Can I use two white towels for, for example for ihram? Uh, yes, you know any material can be used for ihram. Um, however, cotton is the preferred material. Uh, but as we said, uh, white clean cloths of any type can be used, obviously, apart from silk, because men aren't permitted to wear silk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. An individual intends to go for hajj. However, he has difficulty with the ihram sheets, as in he has difficulty with tying the ihram sheets. He wishes to know if there is an alternative for him. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. With regards to the ihram sheets, okay, then a person would put on those ihram sheets and 
they would wear them uh, however and they would practice the practice makes perfect doesn't it so if you're traveling for hajj or if you're traveling for umrah then practice and practice and practice again the top sheet is very basic it is really the bottom sheet which people are concerned about of it undoing and falling but there's a method to it and that is that you stand obviously i can't stand right now because i'm all cabled in but maybe when we get closer to hajj i can stand <laughs> well i hopefully i can stand in the next 15 20 minutes what i mean by that is i can maybe do a hajj special inshallah so when you stand you spread your legs out okay um, and then you get your ihram sheet and you put your ihram sheet on and you grab it in the two hands there so the ihram sheet is going across here and then you fold it and you fold it and you fold it and you fold it so you make a nice fold near your frontal area so your aura is covered well if however it's a towel then the towel is quite thick you don't need to do all these folds you can just do one and then that's it the reason why we fold the cotton one is the cotton is really thin and it's see-through and you're not wearing any undergarments so it can be a little bit you know naughty if you've not covered yourself properly so that's why we teach this 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 kind of like a double you know you know folding on itself like that that's how we do that otherwise if you use a towel ihram which is quite thick then your aura will not show if you still struggle to do that then what you can do and this is not something i would advise generally but maybe specifically is you can get a money belt and tie a money belt but the way you tie the money belt is such that it can also hold your ihram up as well you cannot have a near for a belt because that belt becomes clothing and if it becomes clothing then you're not allowed to wear any stitched garments but if this belt is something that's an accessory like a bag okay uh, like we put shoes in a bag or we've got our you know uh, expensive stuff in a bag like a water bottle or you know our phone or whatever okay uh, and then we have a money bag that we might tie under our arm or we have a money bag that we tie across our waist now this is not clothing because it's not fulfilling the role of clothing the belt with the money in it is not a belt for holding your clothes up it's a belt to put money in however that with that primary intention but if you still tied it like a belt then the, the ulama say that there is a, a scope of permissibility um, to to do that uh, because you're not allowed to use any fastening kind of gear but i would say practice makes perfect and that covers alhamdulillah all the questions on the chaps group let's see if we have any questions on the ladies group okay assalamu alaikum oh, i've missed one out all right so uh, assalamu alaikum is hypnotherapy allowed in islam for medical reasons such as hypnotherapy for irritable bowel syndrome okay so let's have a reply to that one oh. I've just gone and copied it, so let's now reply to it. Uh, wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There's no harm in hypnotherapy. Hypnotherapy doesn't do anything wrong to a person. All it's doing is the hypnotist is trying to find a way to use trigger mechanisms in your mind to give you confidence and give you the ability to be able to do things which you might have set up barriers or walls or, or you know, kind of mental blocks and your mental blocks aren't allowing you to do a certain task. So the hypnotist may talk to you and convince you and give you confidence to work, way, work your way around these mental blocks. So there's no harm in it as such, especially obviously if it's helping you to get rid of an illness like the irritable, irritable bowel syndrome. And the last question on our groups, Alhamdulillah, which is some time to spare so I can take a sip of my coffee. Okay, is this one. Assalamu alaikum, Mufsa. I have a plant which I wish to sell. The soil has white bugs, which is very hard to get rid of. And the only way to completely get rid of the insects is to change the soil completely. Is this something I have to let the buyer know? 
Walaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If these insects are having a detrimental effect on the plant, in other words, if these insects are killing the plant, then yes, you do need to disclose this to the buyer because he needs to know that he's buying a plant that has these bugs in the soil and these bugs are going to destroy this plant. So he'll end up with no plant and that's not fair. So yes, it needs to be told that actually this plant or the soil of this plant is infected with these bugs and these bugs will eventually eat the plant. So therefore, uh, do you still wish to buy it? Okay, so in that case, yes. So that deals, alhamdulillah, with all those questions done. Uh, we are good with time, alhamdulillah. Uh, so ooh, lots of text messages and WhatsApp messages and emails and all the rest of it. Fun and games, I guess I can uh, uh, look at them in my own time, inshallah. Uh, and that is sort of bringing us to a close unless we can get somebody sneak in with a call on 01274. Now that my heart feels better, that I've got my phone next to me. Uh, may Allah bless Naimbai for going all the way to the madrasa to collect it from us, for us. So, you know, all thanks are to him. Um, and uh, may Allah reward him abundantly for every step that he took and, uh, and give him the highest of stations. Ameen. Uh, to remove a burden from a brother, Allah SWT will remove a burden from them uh, on your al Qiyamah. So it gets a couple of minutes just to sneak in a call, 01274-214-299, because if you don't do it in the next 10, 20 seconds, then you're going to have to wait till tomorrow, inshallah, uh, because we are about to draw to a close. Um, we've had a few questions. We've had a question on tahajjud. We've had the question on praying uh, on a chair. We've had the discussion on the tasbihat. We also looked at the name Naz. Uh, as the question came in from the sister, we've also talked about successful and unsuccessful and uh, becoming stressed. We've discussed that as well. And we discussed all the inbox of my Darul Iftar for the gents group and the Darul Iftar for the ladies group, whether it was bugs in soil or whether it was putting on one's ihram. Alhamdulillah, we always get diverse, uh, multi-range questions. And Alhamdulillah, may Allah be praised, uh, we at least make an attempt at a response as well. Well, you had the chance to phone, you didn't phone, so now you're going to have to wait till tomorrow. Uh, but if you still want to email, you can still email on q and a at ikra.tv and we will, inshallah, pick those emails up on our return tomorrow. That's the advantage of the email, is 24-7. Otherwise, I wish you the best and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow, this time remembering to bring my phone with me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.